or do you handle that I got on it. yours? I, yep, I've got okay. it. Okay. Good deal. So you can go ahead and um, take okay. it away. Good deal. Thank, Thank you, Jean. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, everybody, for joining me today. I've got just a couple slides before I jump into the product with you. My name is Noel Mosley. I'm with the MSX Group, and we built Prospero as a replacement for Management Reporter, FRX, and Forecaster to handle your financial reporting, your budgeting, forecasting, and analysis for your general ledger and uh, budget data. So I've got... Um, this next slide, which is a big uh, high-level overview of what Prospero does for us. Prospero is uh, your financial reporting and budgeting solution, allowing organizations to quickly and accurately generate their financial statements and budgets or forecasts in one easy-to-use program. This handles all of your financial reporting needs, like your income statements, balance sheet statements, cash flow statements, trial balance statements, and any other kind of general ledger statements you want to pull together. Uh, it also handles all your budgeting and forecasting in the same application, so you don't have to switch to different applications uh, to handle these two different functions. And we've built inside here some additional features that we find really useful that we did not really have inside Forecaster or FRX or Manager Porter, like interactive charts and graphs. So I'll be looking at that when I get into Prospero itself to show you the charts and graphs and the drill down through those charts and graphs. And with all of the data we have in Prospero, we've got dynamic drill down through the account and transaction level details. And if you are currently a user of Management Reporter, FRX, or Forecaster, uh, we have migration options. So don't worry about having to start from scratch to get this application up and running. Uh, we can migrate the setup information from your existing reports or your existing budget setup in Forecaster over to Prospero, it saves you a ton of time and effort and getting this all up and running. And Judy, as I go through all this stuff, if people have questions, uh, just uh, let me know. I'll stop at any time. Everybody, you've got that go-to webinar control panel on the right-hand side of your screen. There's a question section and there's a chat section as well. Judy's gonna help me with that. Super, thank you. Yep. So Judy, I'm gonna jump over to Prospero itself and just give everybody a big tour and take questions as they come in. And here we go. I've got on my screen Prospero's quick launch window. So a little bit about the navigation for Prospero for you. This is our desktop installation of Prospero, which looks pretty much identical to our web version. When you're installing or deploying Prospero, you can do this locally on your local servers for your SQL database, your IIS servers, and your local installations. Or you can go all through our CLAD, uh, cloud deployment or a hybrid as well. Pretty much identical layouts here. The quick launch lets us uh, easily launch any of our reports. I've got a section on the left-hand side of this quick launch for our reports and charts section. Then right beside that to the right, I've got a section for any report collections or chart collections, which is like where we've got several reports or several charts that we all run at one time. And I've got a section right here uh, to the right of that for our input screens. Got a button for our budget input, which I'll actually start in just a minute with you. Our forecast, our weekly forecast, or anything else we have available available for input. Quick launch is a great way for your end users to easily get to these different areas inside Prospero. There's also our main navigation on the left hand side of the screen. I'll expand that for you so you get a quick view of that. It's very similar to the Microsoft products like Management Reporters Navigation Pane on the left-hand side. We've got buttons on the left-hand side for all the different areas inside Prospero, so it's easy navigation to jump between all of your report definitions, all of your line sets, column sets, and trees that we use to build our reports and our input screens for budgets or forecast, our report collections, security, and all the different areas inside Prospero but I'm not going to focus on the left-hand navigation screen. I'm going to go back to our quick launch with you. So I want to get you to uh, have a feel for what your end users will be looking at when they are working with Prospero, uh, and we'll start off with the budgeting process for you. So let's assume we've got a budget 
users that's logged into Prospero, they've got their quick launch here with all their tiles that they can click one time to open up the input screens or run the reports here. And I'm going to go over and open up the budget input screen to get us started. So one click and Prospero will ask us, what do we want to budget for? So this user can budget for any company they have been assigned access. And we're going to budget for the U.S. company for this instance. Uh, we've also got uh, access to our locations and our departments for budgeting. I'm going to budget for our Denver services and administration for this example. Now, your end users, they'll only see the departments, companies, and locations they've been assigned access. And that was listing our chart of accounts, all of our dimensions from our general ledger. So we only had companies and then departments and locations. If you have five dimensions, they'd all be available as options inside that pop-up window. All right, so for your budget manager for data input for the budget process, it's a really user-friendly style layout, spreadsheet style layout. So if you're coming from Excel spreadsheets or if you're coming from Forecaster, your budget manager should not have uh, uh, much difficulty at all in switching over to Prospero for input. Now this is our main input screen for Forecaster, I mean for, for Prospero. I've got a column across the top, January through December. I've got a year-to-date column, comparing that to prior year actuals with dollar variances and percent variances. When you set up your input screens for your budget managers, you decide what columns should show up here. You can have uh, as many or as few columns here as you need. These could be quarterly columns. These could be all just annual columns. So you, just, you decide that when you set these up for your budget managers. Down the left-hand side of the screen, we are looking at our list of main account numbers. I'm starting off my uh, salaries account, 6,000, uh, going down through all the other accounts, through all the nine, uh, sixes, sevens, eights, and nines. When you set these up, you decide what account numbers your budget manager should see. So it's an easy process. You just list those, list those out in your line sets and, and define those for all of your departments or your different locations. Um, you also control all the color shading, uh, the fonts, uh, the background, everything else for all these rows, and any calculations that are associated with this input screen. Now your budget managers, they'll type in their budget uh, amounts to any of these individual accounts. There's also some quick and easy ways for them to uh, type in balances such as line item details. So if I look at the advertising account, account 7350, Got an icon next to that little um, marker that lets me know that there have been additional rows of detail that this budget manager has added to support these account balances. So instead of just typing in $12,000 for January, they've added more lines to support that $12,000. And to see that, I'll just double click anywhere on that advertising row. And that opens up. And in the green rows that show up here, I can see all the individual accounts that that budget manager has added. So I've got a row added for print publications, online ads, television, magazine ads, Super Bowl ads, even in local newspapers. So your budget managers, they can add additional rows of line details to any account here that's available for input. And even better, they don't have to ask the budget administrator to make any changes to this input screen. So they can add these themselves, and it doesn't confuse the consolidations or anything else in this input screen. They can add as many rows as they need to here. I've got seven rows added for line item details. If they need 20, they'll just right click and insert additional line items, change that label, and type in the balances. All doing that themselves without having to ask the administrator to make any changes. So line of details is a great feature for adding additional information for these rows inside the budget input screens. Now, another way for adding detail for your input screens would be for adding notes because it's a great option for all your budget managers. They always like to explain what all these dollar amounts are coming from. So instead of just adding line of details, I'll just double click to close that line of detail row there for us. And that resummarizes all those account balances from line item details back to the advertising account row. And for adding notes for any of these rows here for input, 
I just click one time on any row that's available for input and I can see I've already got some rows that have already been added for notes. Like under supplies, there's a square blue uh, icon on the left hand side. If I just click one time any row on the supplies row, I can see on the right hand side uh, the name of the user ID that added the note under the annotations panel and the date and time that note was added and the text right below it. So this budget manager can add that note for this row and they can also go ahead and add as many more notes for this row as they need to. At the bottom of this panel on the right hand side they've got a button for add that just pops up with a window for the text. Click OK and that adds it on that right hand side for us. So it's great for them to add notes here for this input screen. And if there are multiple, multiple people uh, that have access to this particular department and location, uh, they can add their notes as well and they'll be added on that right hand side. So if you were making notes in Forecaster, you were limited to the certain number of characters for every account. Uh, not so here. You can add as many here as you need to and just they just keep adding to that right hand side panel. So a couple of great features there for adding uh, uh, notes and line item details for their main input screen inside Prospero. Now this screen here is the typical layout for your main input screen for budgeting or forecasting or planning input screens. There's also two additional tabs I want to mention at the top of this window. I'm looking at the main tab. There's also a tab for human resources and a tab for capital. So both of these tabs uh, would be budgeting additional information for this same department location that I started off with. And looking here at the human resources tab, I've got a list of all the different employees. Every row here is a different employee that has been brought into Prospero so that we can budget for this department location's personnel, wages, taxes, and benefits. So easy for you to import all of your existing employees into Prospero, make changes for their earnings for next year, and also add any new hires for next year as well. Now, human resources as well as capital, these are two optional tabs, but they do come in really handy for breaking down uh, the details for these parts of the budget. And pretty much the majority of our clients, when they implement Prospero, they'll also add these two tabs. The setup is really easy for human resources and capital so it's not um, a lot of uh, it doesn't take a lot of time or effort to set up these two tabs and for security for both of these if you have budget managers who should not have access to human resource detail or capital you can restrict that so they wouldn't even have they wouldn't even see the tab for human resources or the tab for capital if they should not so easy to set that up inside security in Prospero um, inside the human resource tab here we can budget for all of our existing employees and new hires uh, this handles all of your salary employees as well as your hourly employees you can also handle pay changes uh, two pay changes per person uh, for the next year we also track options for bonus percentages or bonus amounts uh, and we also have uh, filter columns to help you figure out which taxes should apply to uh, certain people by different states or medical classes or other benefit calculations. So we handle all those filters to help figure out what calculations should apply to which employees here. Now capital, really easy to set that tab up as well. Every row on the capital tab is for budgeting new assets from next year. So your budget manager can open up their input screen, click on this capital tab, add additional rows here for individual assets or groups of asset for the new budget. And Prospero uses all the information on this tab uh, to track and post the cost of these assets or groups of asset to the cost account. And it also projects the depreciation expense for these assets. Capital, just like HR, it's an optional tab, although it's really easy to set this tab up for the budget process. And if a budget manager should not see capital, uh, we can restrict it so they don't even see the capital tab when they go to input. 
So two really easy to set up uh, detail tabs here for human resources and capital. Add a great amount of flexibility for your budget managers when they're going through the budget process. Now, all three of these tabs, the capital, human resources, and the main, they are all going back into the same Prospero budget database. So the huge part of budgeting inside Prospero is that as soon as your budget manager is completed and making all the changes to the screen for any of these three tabs, and they click the Save button, all these balances go back into Prospero SQL database, the same one that everybody at your company uses, and they're all consolidated right away, and they're available for reporting even against actuals right away. So you don't have to save this page, and then export to an external file, then import to your general ledger. Everything is right here in one database, all your budget, all your actuals, all your existing reports for financials, uh, everything's in one location one application so that you can easily compare everything right away as soon as you click that save button. Now if your budget managers are responsible for multiple locations or multiple departments it's easy for them to switch back and forth. So let's say they've finished with this one, they've saved it and they can click the icon at the top for reopening the input screen for a different location or department. Let's bring that same window we started off with for our company, location, and department, and let's just switch, I think, from maybe administration over to, let's look at the sales department. So I'm switching to a different department, and I'm doing this process. This other department could have the same list of accounts, same calculations as the one that we just finished. Uh, although that when we look at this one, it is a completely different one. This is for our sales and revenue and everything else for cost to get sold. So it does have a different list of accounts down the left-hand side. Same columns across the top, but different calculations. So when you're setting up the budget input screens for your budget managers, everybody could share one template with the same list of accounts, same formulas for everybody or you could tailor them so that they have completely different list of accounts and completely different list of calculations. So it's really dynamic and helping you set those up for whatever your company and organization needs for your budget process. In this page here for our sales department, we are just tracking a lot of different unit calculations. So we're doing units sold per month, our price per unit, and that will be used to calculate our dollar, uh, dollar amounts in revenue. Now, all the information here that we have put into Prospero for your budget, uh, it's all saved in the SQL database. Your budget managers can come back to these screens as often as they need to until your budget administrator decides to lock it down and, and not allow anybody to make changes. So when you get to that point, your budget manager, administrator come in here, lock this from input, and then make it read only. Now, another great feature about Prospero is that a lot of time you'll have a question about when did those balances get changed and who made changes to those balances on these input screens. So if I go back to our budget input screen and let's say I'm looking at any of our accounts here that are available for input. If I go to the uh, ribbon at the top there's an icon for history. This will open up the history for any changes to that account and all the changes here will show me the um, user ID that made the changes. You see the administrator made the changes, the date and time the changes were made, and all the dollar amounts as they changed um, during the budget process. So you track all that under history inside Prospero so you can look back on any account and see who made what changes and when. Now as I went through this whole process, um, I opened up some history tabs, I opened up a couple different input screens, Prospero handles that with different tabs inside the application, so I can see these listed across the top here. If I jump back to this tab here, I'll go back to my very first input screen. 
I'll go to this tab, I'll jump to the input screen I had for our sales department. So it's easy navigation for this person to jump between any of these input screens that I've already got open. Now, that gives you a high level overview of the budgeting process inside Prospero. Easy for your budget managers to navigate, easy input, and uh, great features for um, handling that input as far as line item details, adding notes to any of these accounts, and the detail input screens for human resources and for capital. So I'm gonna look at our reporting features inside Prospero next. And Judy, if any questions have come in about uh, budgeting, I'll be glad to tackle those before I jump over. Um, I don't have any rate at this time. That looks great, I love this. Awesome, thank you, appreciate that. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna close out some of these tabs and switch over to reporting with everybody. So I'll close out of the sales department, the history tab, our administration input, not gonna save that, and this other history tab. And let me take this back to our quick launch window. So this is where we started off with Prospero for our quick launch. We started off with this budget input tab and we covered all those topics for the budget process. Then I'm gonna look at reporting with you. Now this will be for your financial statements, your income statements, balance sheet statements, cash flow statements, trial balance statements, and any other kind of supporting schedule that you wanna build inside Prospero for your general ledger data or against your budget data, forecast data, or any other kind of numeric data that you import into Prospero. So if you've got other information outside of Prospero or outside of your general ledger, like you may have statistics inside an Excel spreadsheet, we can import those into Prospero SQL database and then use those on your input screens and on your reports as well. So any numeric data, easy to import inside here and use in reporting or for budgeting. All right, let me take us over to our monthly income statement. I'll click that one time and Prospero will bring up the report. I actually had already run it. I ran it for the whole company at one time. Uh, let me show you what uh, it would ask me before I started that. So if I had just clicked it one time, Prospero will ask me what company I want to run it for, as well as uh, what department, Let me switch back to that quick launch. I'll go to my tile for monthly income statement, click it one time, and this will pop up and all right, it goes right to that report for me. So uh, I could run this for different departments and different locations as well. Uh, for here, I wanna show you uh, when you are defining your reports inside Prospero, I've only got very few columns here, actuals, budget, dollar variance, percent variance, description column on the left. You define all of your columns when you build these reports inside Prospero. You handle all the fonts, the colors, the shading, all the information, and all the uh, accounts that uh, populate every row down the uh, page here. So easy to build these, and when you're building your reports inside Prospero, we build these very similar to how you build your reports inside FRX or Management Reporter. Uh, we, hand, we use that with line sets and column sets. So every report you build will have a column set telling it what every column represents, and it will have a line set telling us what every row represents. And it's pretty easy to build those and then combine those in the report definitions. Now, any report that you got inside Prospero, you've got drill down options. So if I want to double click on any of these rows and drill down, uh, and see where these balances are coming from. It's an easy process, just double click anywhere on this row, like on the sales, top row here for sales. I'll double click and the next page opens up for the account level detail page. It opens up on a, another uh, on a tab here at the top, right beside the report tab. So easy for me to switch back and forth. And on this account level detail tab, I can see all of the accounts that make up that balance for that row. So easy to drill down to the account level detail page. You can also drill down to the transaction level detail page. 
And if you want to change the drill down order, it's an easy process inside here. So let's say instead of just going directly to the account level detail, let me close this window. And let's say that I want to have it summarized by department. So this is the process that you can handle easily inside FRX, changing the drill down order as you're looking at the report. Uh, but it's not something that you could do inside Management Reporter. So we kind of brought that back from the FRX days. So if I go to the top and choose the option that says change drill down order, my account level detail is at the top, but let's just say I want to go uh, drill down through department next. So for department, I'll just click and drag that to the top of my list and click OK there. And now if I double click on my sales row, This is going to drill down through my departments. I can see my sales department, marketing, R&D, and services. So it's easy to change that drill down order according to any of your dimensions or segments in your chart of accounts. And you can do that in the report definition itself before you even run the report, uh, or you can do it uh, right here on the window where you're looking at a report that you've already generated. So easy to help track down those differences, those balances and see where that money is actually coming from. Let me jump back a tab or two here. All right, another thing about the reports inside Prospero are the output options. So I want to mention that in FRX, you had a lot of output options. You could have a report generate directly to the screen, directly to the printer, directly to Excel or PDF or other options. And you, we kind of lost that with Management Reporter. So with Management Reporter, you could only generate directly to the screen and then you could print it or, or you could then export it to Excel or PDF. Uh, we've kind of gone back to the FRX days where you had that flexibility. You can choose those output options at any point in the process. You can define that right in the report definition itself before you generate it. You can choose the output option uh, as you generate it or as you're looking at here on the screen. So easy output options uh, inside Prospero at any stage in the process, sending it out to Excel, out to PDF copies or to the printer. A lot of our clients, you know, they love Excel, so they'll have the report def uh, definition set to generate uh, directly to Excel. So they have that set in the report definition itself. They click um, run report and it goes straight to Excel for them. Now looking at this report, I want to mention also an option that we built inside Prospero for publishing reports. So inside Prospero, every time you run a report, it, uh, the default is to open up that report, report on the screen here. Now it does not save this version of this report unless I publish it. So publishing is kind of like our way of archiving this copy so that I know that these are the numbers on today that I'm looking at. Even if I go back and I change a balance inside the general ledger, my published copy is archived, archived and it will not change. So if I go to publish at the top here, I am just going to archive this out to December 2019. That's what I ran this report for. And that will actually archive this version of this report with these numbers inside the Prospero SQL database. It's a static copy. These numbers will never change. Even if you change something in the general ledger for this period, these numbers are going to be kept as they are. Now, also, when you publish reports inside of Prospero, it also adds an option for collaboration. And on the right hand side, I've got my annotations panel. This is the same kind of panel we had on the budget input screens, where all your different budget managers could go into any row of the input screen and add their notes for that row. Uh, same concept here. And it's really useful if you've got an actual to budget report like we're looking at here and your budget, your managers have to go through and explain all their high dollar differences. So any, any manager that has access to this report can click one time on any row here. And then on the right hand side, click add. 
type in their text and click OK to add it to this report. Now that puts the note on the right hand side the user ID that added it, the date and time it was added, and it also puts that little square, uh, the blue square on the left-hand side of that row, uh, letting me know there's a note that's been added to that row, and if I put my cursor over that blue square, it pops up and shows me the text that I added. So a great way in published reports for anybody who has access to this report to open it up, see everybody else's notes, and add their own notes as well. Now this is available for, uh, these notes are available for your, your input screens for budget, as well as any published reports. They're not available for any reports that you have not published. So if you run a report and you're looking at it on the screen, you won't see that um, panel on the right hand side for annotations yet. You actually have to publish it and then you can add notes to that saved copy. All right, so a great way for collaboration between everybody at the company there. And when I say everybody at the company, um, all security inside Prospero is based off of Windows authentication as well as standard authentication. So you can have everybody that is on your network sign in with their network ID, which is great because they don't have to know any additional uh, user ID or passwords. Uh, or you could set up non-Windows authentication, just standard SQL uh, user IDs and passwords so that you could log in even if you don't have an account on the network. Now I looked at this report as an example, this income statement, but again, this would be the application you would use for all of your financial statements. Uh, balance sheet, cash flow, trial balance statement, and any other supporting schedule that you want to use from your GL data, uh, your budget data, or anything else you import into Prospero for reporting. Now, another feature I want to point out is the charting and graphing options inside Prospero. So let me jump back to Quick Launch. Right here under <clears throat> reports and charts. I've got one for uh, the graph for our budgeted income statement and I've already ran that once, got it open here. I've got three pie charts for this uh, example. On the left hand side showing our actuals in the middle right here I've got prior year actuals on the right hand side our budget and I am tracking our net revenue in blue and in red, our total expenses for each one of these. So any report that you build inside Prospero, you can pull that data into charts and graphs, pie charts, bar charts, line charts, any of those options are available inside Prospero. And it's not just a static copy. So in Forecaster, you never had any options for charting and graphing. Uh, in Management Reporter, you do have some options for charting and graphing, but they're very limited. So inside MR, you can create a chart and graph, uh, but it's um, uh, it is not a dynamic and you can't drill down through it. Whereas these, the charts and graphs here inside Prospero, you actually can double click and drill down through the pie charts or any of the charts here to the next level of details. Um, before I double click, let me point out that anytime I hover over a piece of this pie chart, it pops up, shows me that it's net revenue in the blue, shows me the dollar amount for this part of the chart, and the percentage of the total for this pie chart. Same thing with total expenses. And if I double click on total expenses, this will drill down to the next level. It opens it up in a new tab here. So I've got my first tab that I just started off with. I double clicked on total expenses, opened up this tab for me. And on the right hand side, I can see this is drilling down through our different locations. Miami, San Francisco, Seattle, and all those are split across the pie chart here. Now the same way when I looked at my income statement and I changed the drill down order to department, I can do the same thing with charts and graphs here. So let me close out of this window, jump back to our tab for that first pie chart, and let's change the drill down order so that instead of by location, I'll take department, Drag that to the top of my list here. And now I'll double click on total expenses. 
And now I can see that these are broken out by administration, services, R&D, marketing, and sales. So the same drill down options and uh, the ability to change that drill down order that we saw in that first income statement, you can do that same process for any of your charts and graphs inside Prospero. Uh, really easy way to summarize this data and get a feel for where it's all, where it's all coming from. And when you're looking at the charts inside Prospero, you also have other options to arrange the data. I've got three options under chart at the top here for view, layout, and options. So if I wanted to, let's say, go to options and just break these apart, explode slices. If I wanted to group all the smaller slices, say anything below 10%, I'll just check the box for group small slices. And I'll just increase this right now as anything less than five percent let's just up this to say anything less than 11 percent so easy to change that and group all those balances uh, and analyze that data in this graphical layout now you can do this with the graphical layout on any of the reports you've got inside prospero um, also uh, any reports that you set up inside Prospero, you can switch from the numeric view over to the chart view right here. And if you're looking at uh, data in a chart view like I am currently, I can go back to the top, go to that chart and view option, and switch back to the report view, which is the numeric totals for us. So easy to jump back and forth, analyze that data numerically or graphically, change the drill down order, and really get a feel for where all this data is coming from. So when I went through this whole process, uh, every time I double clicked or went from numeric reports or to charts and graphs, uh, Prospero opens all this information in separate tabs at the top here. So again, easy to jump back and forth between any of these different tabs for navigation inside Prospero or back to Quick Launch so I can open up, open up any of my other reports or charts or my input screens. So Judy, that was a high level overview, a lot of bells and whistles that we've got inside Prospero for budgeting, forecasting, reporting, and analyzing that data visually. Uh, I'll be glad to look at any questions anybody had. I do have a recap screen. I was going to jump back into the PowerPoint with you before we close out today. I love the looks of this, the color and the graphics and being able to see it in a visual way in a graph form and then drill back into the information is just wonderful. So um, there are a question here. So if we have information in FRX today, do we need to rekey that information or can that be just easily imported into um, Prospero? So you do not have to rekey it. So if you've got re reports inside FRX or inside Management Reporter, uh, okay. we can copy that data straight from the uh, FRX uh, uh, databases or okay. from the MR databases into mm -hmm. here. So you don't have to build those row definitions again. You don't have to copy mm -hmm. and paste. We just have a, a wizard that copies it from those database tables, FRX and MR, over to Prospero for you. Oh, wonderful. Yep, so you're not starting from scratch. Uh, it's a, uh, a great feature so that uh, you don't have to rebuild all that stuff. Great. This has to be really helpful when staff that are creating budgets and forecasting are probably in different locations now as well. Uh, to have that tool that they can use has to be so helpful for a business. Definitely, and um, if they're in different locations around the country or around the world even, as long as they can get to a web browser, they can pull it up on their network and log into the application. So they don't even have to have it installed locally. As long as they can get to the web browser for the network, they can open all this up in a browser. Great, thank okay. you. And everybody shares, all the data goes back in one SQL database. And as soon as they click save, it's consolidated. All right, so G, I'm going to take us back to a recap slide for us. But if anybody has questions, just type those in. Judy can uh, 
handle those for me and uh, let me let me know that when they come in. So on uh, the next slide with you, reporting and budgeting is what Prospero has been built for from the ground up. On the left-hand side, we've got the report items there, report definitions for all your financial statements, easy analysis in numeric or visual layouts with a changeable drill down order. So you can switch that between any of your dimensions or different company summaries uh, and drill down to summarize those balances. Any data you've got inside Prospero can be viewed in charts and graphs, not, not just static charts and graphs, they're dynamic. So you can double click and drill down through those charts and graphs. Uh, I talked about published reports, which is where we archive a static copy of the reports that you run. I didn't show any report collections, but report collections is like where you can have like several reports all run at one time, like in one package. So you just have to open up that report collection one time, change the date, click run report, and everything in that collection runs at the same time. An income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, whatever else you have in there um, will all run at one time instead of having to run them all separately. Uh, and um, your output options, you can run all the reports inside Prospero directly to the screen or directly to Excel, PDF, or straight to the printer. So easy output options inside Prospero for us. And on the right-hand side, budgeting, we looked at our, we started off with the main input screen for Prospero, easy input for your budget managers. We talked about line item details, so they can add their own additional rows without um, asking for the budget administrator to make changes to the input screen, and it doesn't mess up uh, consolidations or anything. Annotations, where they can add the notes for any of the rows there, account history to track any changes to the budget um, that's been made to the budget balances. Uh, the detailed pages for human resource budgeting and for capital budgeting. And to me, the biggest thing about budgeting is since they click save, it's inside one SQL database that's all consolidated right away and immediately available for reporting against any of your actuals, prior budget, prior forecaster balances, or anything else inside Prospero. And that last bullet point at the bottom there, migration options are available for any of your setup inside Management Reporter, FRX, and Forecaster. So you can handle that. We can set up um, to pull all those definitions over to Prospero for you. Saves you a ton of time and a ton of money in getting this new system up and running. So Judy, my last slide here is for uh, what's next for everybody. So Judy, I've got I've had your email address up here. So I'll let them contact you. I think I'm sending out some emails as well after today. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, this has just been great. In in a previous chapter of my life, I did a lot of budgeting. And of course, the, the little note feature and when I changed it and why <laughs> would be so <laughs> wonderful to have because I changed it a lot. <laughs> yep. Started out really yep. high. Yep. And then you have to oh gosh, it'd take me two, three months to get the budgets done. And it was just brutal. And I couldn't remember what I started out with two months prior. So all those notes are so very helpful. I just love the product. So great job, Noah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. And hey, I, I, that last bullet point down here at the bottom here, um, if people uh, want to look at a 30-day uh, a trial of Prospero, we can set that up for them as well. So I'll have them email you about that. And we can set that up as a... Uh, a login so they can test it before they even get um, down the sales process. Awesome. Thank you so much, Noah. I really appreciate yep. it. And thank you all for attending. Let me know if you have any additional questions and we'll get those taken care of. And have a super day, everyone. Thanks, Judy. You too. Bye, everybody.